Welcome to the One Degree Shift Podcast, your compass in the journey of life. Here at Georgetown Baptist Church, Penang, we're all about real stories, real struggles, and real triumphs. Join us as we dive deep into the lives of ordinary people navigating an ever-changing world, seeking wisdom, inspiration, and connection. Whether you're at a crossroad or simply seeking an encouragement, this podcast is your companion. So with hearts and minds open, we hope this podcast blesses you. Thank you for tuning in and get ready to be blessed. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the One Degree Shift podcast. I'm your host today. I'm Po Sim, and we're excited to have with us in the studio a young, dynamic couple. They are passionate about living missional lives, whether it is in the rural areas with the people that they're ministering to or in the corporate world, mobilizing people for the works of God. He is currently an executive pastor with Skyline SIB, in Kota Kinabalu, and they are bivocational roles. He and his wife are leading the campus ministry there. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Terence and Deborah Chan. Thank hey, you so much. Welcome Thanks so much, for guys. Having us. We're so glad so to good have to you. Be yeah, here. It's awesome Excellent. to be here. Well, could you give us a brief summary about your background and what your current organizations do? Yeah, so um, we are actually from, both from Kuala Lumpur, from KL. And then somewhere, uh, so we were in the corporate world. Um, I was doing, um, I was working in startup uh, in the digital area for at least eight to 10 years. And yourself? Yeah, I was in a consultancy, travel consultancy, dealing with sustainability. Yeah, eventually, I think a couple of years into it, I think at least eight to 10 years in the corporate world, uh, we felt the Lord's call to literally pack our bags, to go to the mission field, and there was a bit of a, a tussle or like, you know, wrestling match happening. But in the end, uh, long story short, we, we uh, responded to the call of God. We went to Cambodia. Mm. Uh, we lived there for two years in the rural areas of Cambodia. Um, from uh, having a car in KL to a motorcycle. Uh, from living in an urban area to uh, uh, our neighbors were cows and chickens mm. in Cambodia. And so it, it was really fun. We, we not just learn, uh, but we had to unlearn a lot of things uh, during that period of time. Um, subsequently, after that, uh, we felt the Lord's call to come back to Malaysia. Uh, we didn't know what and where and what specifics. Uh, but in the end, we ended up in Sabah. The, so the Lord brought us to Sabah and KK. Uh, but initially it wasn't KK. It was really to the interiors of uh, Sabah to uh, work among the rural folks. Uh, especially in the areas of education, mm. so uh, we we were there for the first for the so for the first couple of years we were that's what we were doing, and then eventually, uh, more recently in twenty twenty onwards, we set up two uh, media companies. Mm. Uh, the first one uh, of which is called Wiki Impact. So Wiki Impact is a media platform uh, for the social impact space in Malaysia. So we cover issues like poverty, uh, statelessness. Uh, undocumented peoples, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, we have a team uh, doing the, those research. We are publishing content uh, on a daily, regular basis. Uh, basically trying to make complex issues mm. simple mm. for a regular folk of uh, Malaysians to understand. Uh, the other company, uh, which uh, probably a year later, uh, we co-founded uh, with our with another team, uh, is called Faith Hour. So mm. Faith Hour is a Christian media platform where we talk about... Uh, people in schools and marketplace, uh, regular folks who are really living missional lives uh, do, or, or doing things that, um, um, that that love their neighbor and, and impact uh, others around them. And we wanted to cover those stories. We wanted to really uncover and also share with the broader uh, nation uh, what these people are also doing uh, in those spaces. So yeah, that's, that's generally uh, what we do. Of course, we still wear different hats here and there, but that's just generally what we do. Well, it's interesting to see how like coming from the skill set of mm. IT and digital mm. media, how you mm. merge that with your passion, yeah. you know, for the poor and how it all came together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and Deb has a background in comms and writing and, and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, so I studied journalism mm -hmm. uh, and cultural studies mm -hmm. uh, and have always kind of loved the diversity of various cultures and everything. Uh, but it's interesting to see how God kind of puts both corporate background as well as uh, ministry uh, desires and loves, you know, into kind of like, you know, what would, whatever that we're doing right now. Um, so as, as he mentioned, we did spend, uh, Terence mentioned that we spent two years in Cambodia. But that didn't come about like, you know, just all of a sudden. Uh, we have actually grown up uh, with many mission trip experiences mm -hmm. since we were teenagers. So uh, I think our earliest mission trip experience was probably 14 years old yeah. or something like yeah. that, right? 14, 15 years old. We were part of this ministry called the Royal Rangers. Uh, and every year, you know, we would uh, just take a trip either to the Orang Asli Kampongs or, you know, to other uh, villages to do ministry. And that was uh, our first hand exposure. And year on year, you we kind of like grew the love for, you know, either uh, other communities uh, of, of different cultures and sort of saw like the kingdom of God beyond our own church walls. Mm -hmm. uh, and so over time, I think that the love for missions and the love for people uh, grew over time. And then, you know, just the call to go and do a longer stint in Cambodia came mm -hmm. about without us even wanting it or, you know, desiring it from the from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting how you say like because of the exposure, like you grew to develop a heart for it. Mm. I think that's really important for all young, you know, young people or even the youth to expose them, you know, from their youth. Um, but take us back to the time where you mentioned you felt a call of God to really go on missions to Cambodia. Mm. So for a lot of people, you know, they may be saying, well, I don't really know what God has called me to. I'm still kind of searching for it. Like, what would you say to them? What was that experience like for you? Um, I would say, take a step at a time. Um, and like what Deb mentioned, everything is really a step at a time. Really the small yeses and small um, obedience uh, and surrender to God. And that's how where we come to where we are. And, and there's still, you know, uh, a, a huge uh, pathway forward for us and, you know, those we do not know. But what we know is um, when God speaks, uh, we should be ready. We better be ready to respond to Him. Uh, in that case, um, somewhere around 2013, that's when the Lord spoke. But actually, it goes slightly before that. Somewhere around 2010, 2011, you know, uh, every year towards the uh, end of the year, the both of us, we pray and we ask the Lord to speak to us and, you know, what, what to do. So from 2010, 2011, I remember talking to her and say, hey, uh, why don't we consider going on a longer stint mission? We don't have kids, you know, we are okay. Uh, let's do it before the kids come. Right, uh, and then never materialize. It's <laughs> always like you know something you know, or maybe we're not ready or something. Right? But There's when, always there are always reasons, right? Right. We're climbing the corporate ladder, or we want to settle down first. Maybe let's get a bigger house. You know, all, all sorts of uh, good reasons, right? They're not wrong reasons, but there was always a reason not yeah. to go. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And, and I mean, th those of you who are, are, are watching this, we gave the reasons that our generation would always give, right? Um, but when 2013 came and we heard that call very distinctly, it was, um, of all things, it was the wrong timing to us, naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she, she's just pregnant. She just got pregnant, right? Wow. We were waiting for our first kid, uh, first grandchild, both families. Wow. Our bosses on each, so different companies, but the bosses, uh, both came and spoke to us and said, hey, at the end of this year, uh, just you know, do what you need to do. At the end of this year, we are looking at a promotion. We're also looking for um, um, moving up uh, in terms of leadership in the company. And yeah, so those were on our table. Right. But at the same time, the Lord's call was also on that table. Now, yeah, so we, we had to um, choose the Lord's way or you know what of course you can have both mm -hmm. but for us at the time when it was placed it was you know what would you uh, choose right mm -hmm. yeah so in the end we we, we surrendered um, and, we, and, we, and, and we left and then one just one thing led to another you know um, and that's where, where we are today I like how you said like it's the little step 
of obedience mm. that you take, mm. you know, as you go along living out your faith, that makes it easier for you to take those bigger step of faith when God really calls you mm. for like a major, you know, mission. Um, but could you share any stories um, of like perhaps God's faithfulness that you've seen Him work out that has kind of quietened down those, you know, fears or anything, like all those excuses, you know, we give ourselves. Like, how did you see God work that out when you obeyed and went there? Sure. Uh, may, maybe I could share just one one story. I mean, like, you know, uh, but before I share that story, I think uh, before we stepped out, like our, to date, our biggest step of faith, at least, you know, was uh, really stepping out of our comfort zone into Cambodia. And then since then, it was like, no, no turning back. Like, I, I feel like our faith level uh, just took a, you know, 180 degree turn at, because we saw God in a different light. But uh, at that time, I think that was the biggest faith uh, uh, step that we took. Prior to that, I think, you know, we've been growing up in church and we hear different preachers come up to speak and missionaries and so forth. And they share a lot of testimonies, right? And we go like, wow, that can only happen to them. Like those testimonies right. are only for preachers or missionaries or people who, you know, have great faith. And um, and then we realize, hey, after being in the field for several years, actually we serve the same God because the God that works miracles in their lives mm. can work miracles in our lives as well. But do we allow God to do so or not? So uh, so with that, I think it was a few months after we had settled down in Cambodia. And it was just one of those regular afternoons where we were just sitting down. And um, and Facebook was already, you know, there. Uh, it was already present at that time. And so we were just scrolling and kind of keeping up to date with our friends' news and, you know, what's what's happening uh, it, back home in Malaysia. And uh, it suddenly kind of dawned on the both of us. It's like, you know, our friends were either getting bigger cars or bigger promotions or they were going overseas for holidays and all. And we were happy for them. But then at the same time, we we're like, what are we doing here in Cambodia? It's like, you know, why did God call us here? And uh, and then we look at our child, uh, Seth, who was only then one year plus, And we were thinking, how are we going to pay for his education, right? Uh, like we know that tertiary education is going to cost, you know, a hole in our, our pockets. And like, can we actually afford it if we continue on with this faith journey? And it was just a passing thought. It wasn't as if we were, you know, uh, complaining uh, a lot, but it was just, Lord, how are we going to pay for it? And like our friends seem to have it better. Like right. the grass looks greener on the other side. And and we didn't mingle in that thought whatsoever. We just had that thought, had that conversation and we went on with, you know, the afternoon. And not long after that, I think it was probably that day itself, yeah. right? Uh, Terrence got a DM uh, on his Facebook and it was an uncle uh, from church who had been following our journey. And he just said, you know, I've been praying and uh, the Lord spoke to me very specifically uh, that I have a, um, I'm called to this specific ministry and this specific ministry is actually to bless uh, ministers' children, right? Uh, I like that. Financially, right? So can I have your son's bank account? Right. Um, and so for three years? Yeah, so so after that, after we gave him the bank account details, uh, for three years, n without fail, he would bank in a certain amount into Seth's account. And he says, this is just to bless your son uh, for his education or whatever that he needs in the future. And that was God saying to us, like, I have taken care of you. If I've called you, I will also assure you that I will provide for you and I will take care of all your needs. Um, so that was one of many testimonies that we can share uh, just being in the field. And that starts with us, I guess, stepping out of our comfort zone. Uh, and when we do so, then we're allowing God to, you know, mm -hmm. have His hand right. and His way in our lives. Yeah. So that... To us, that was a very big lesson uh, mm. in terms of provision. And we, from then on, until today, we don't mop or don't complain uh, because you are called to live uh, contented right. in seasons of lack, in season of abundance. Yeah, right. uh, that's, that's, that's the key. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, I love how you say it. You know, it's the same God we serve and yeah. it's just about us stepping out in faith and just allowing yeah. God to do it because He wants to tell miraculous stories even through our lives. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So I'm curious though, so when you guys went to Cambodia at first, 
did you guys have anything already in place? Did you guys raise funds for it? Did you know like what was going to happen or was just completely stepping out into the darkness? Yeah. So like I said, it's always one step at a time. Uh, Cambodia was not foreign to us. It may seem like someone first time hearing is like very foreign to us. Uh, but you know, those uh, trips that we do every year or two, three times a year, we've already been going to Cambodia. We've already been uh, having relationships with the people there. Uh, we've already been building networks and partners. We've been bringing teams, doctors, teachers there. So actually when the Lord spoke to us uh, mm -hmm. to uh, pack our bags and go, uh, it was quite straightforward. Uh, we knew where we we're going to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we went there, obviously we don't speak the language. So, so many other things change, but um, it wasn't that... Um, uh, start, it didn't start from my empty right. uh, blank sheet, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love how like, even not knowing it, like mm. indirectly got like puts things in place. Yeah. And so it's always the next step and just take the next exactly step. That. Absolutely. Exactly and, I, and I think it's very powerful when the Bible says the Holy Spirit teaches us all things, right? Mm. And really it is the Holy Spirit that teaches us all things. And so, you know, we're, we're not, um, we're not the typical study, you know, in a Bible school and graduate from a Bible school and then uh, and then become missionaries. Actually, the funny thing is when people started calling us missionaries, mm -hmm. we were like, no, that's not us, you know. <laughs> uh, so Accidental. yeah, the very first time that we heard that term used on us, we we're like, no, we're, we're just normal people. Like we're just obeying God, right? Um, but then the Holy Spirit really teaches us all things. What we really need to do then is just to obey one step at a time mm -hmm. and He carves out the path. Um, so when it comes to even finances, uh, for us as a as a family, we were already, you know, married and and we have a child. I think it was very important for us to think wisely as well, right? Mm. How then do we sustain ourselves when we're in the mission field? And so one of the prayers that we prayed while we were before we went, um, and after we said yes to the Lord was, Lord, we don't want to be in the mission field worrying about our finances and where we're going to find money to put food on the table. Uh, that if you call this, Lord, that you provide for us, but teach us how mm. to do it, right? And so um, we just brought our corporate experience into place, drew up a budget for a year uh, uh, and and a little more, and then put some safeguards into place, for example, insurance and make sure that we have savings, how much do we need to budget. And once we kind of put all of that together, and then we were like, okay, Lord, we have the budget, but where are we going to get the money? So Holy Spirit teaches us again, right? And so then we started praying like, Lord, who should we ask and who should we knock on doors, you know, to get these finances? And um, and it's it really, it's a day-to-day Thing, mm. right sometimes we'll just pray and then a name comes into mind and I will say okay I think I think this is the right person to ask mm. and so we'll boldly just go and ask right and if we get rejected it's all right you know at, at least we tried uh, but I think within maybe a few months of, mm. of us kind of canvassing uh, we managed to to raise the budget uh, you know and so when we left for Cambodia there was I guess in some sense, there was no worry of finance that mm. the Lord had already provided for us. And so now it's not a worry of finance, but Lord help us to steward what was given to us well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because like for our generation, you know, some of us grew up with stories of these like great missionaries of old, you know, and that's kind of yeah. the picture that we see, oh, we're going to pack our bags with, in like in the coffin and we may not come back and things like that. So I think like sometimes it, it, it brings a sense of, oh my gosh, it's God going to call me to be a missionary? Yeah. But, you know, just hearing your stories, is just like everyday yeah. people just like obeying God, exactly. you know, is the next step and God will provide. And, you know, it's just doing what you know to do and what you can. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and I always tell you, you know, uh, our generation and those who are younger, I said, the picture of a missionary today is very different. The picture mm -hmm. of a missionary is uh, a teacher, a basketball player, mm. uh, a business person, a consultant. An accountant, right. right? These are pictures of missionaries. Really, it really is a missional life. It's true, right? Yeah. Uh, if you separate those two, then I think we have to re revisit theology and, and what the Word of God says about our life. Correct. Mm. Our mission field is where we are, Absolutely. no matter what we do. Exactly. Absolutely. If we can't do that in our office and schools today, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's hard to go to another culture and, and, and do it if we are not missional in the first place. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we heard about your story 
leaving the corporate world and going into you know the rural areas, talk about why you left the rural areas and came back to the corporate world. What made what made that shift? Yeah. So I think it's not so much uh, coming back to the corporate world per se. Um, so firstly, the, it was also COVID. Uh, but COVID wasn't uh, the factor. I, I was also doing my master's at that same time, period of time. Two is our child, uh, our firstborn just turned seven. That means standard one. Mm. And like what you described just now, three, we didn't want to be um, having kids who uh, do not, who have a, who have parents, but they are always busy with ministry. So we were quite cognizant in that sense that once they start school, we need to revisit our model of uh, missions, ministry, working, and so on. Mm. So that was a philosophy and value that we hold on very dearly to. So when we started making shifts and talking about you know all these things, uh, one idea led to another. Mm. Uh, again, small yeses, small steps. Um, the Lord brought in... Um, friends or people that we've not reconnected before and we spoke and we talk about just social work, mm. right? Not Nothing Christian about it, just social work, some of the, the stresses we've seen, some of the uh, issues and the challenges in Malaysia. And we realized, hey, in Malaysia, we do not have a single hub where we have this data available for people. Right. Uh, we call them change makers right. for change makers. So where do they source data from? Where do they find these stories? How do they help? How do mm. they find jobs related to the uh, social impact space? You know, all of this. And because of our comms and digital and, you know, web, uh, all this, all of this really is an amalgamation of experiences. Uh, whether you see it as accidental or not, I don't, we mm. don't. Uh, and so, hey, let's let's do something. And that's how Wiki Impact was birthed. Right. Right. Uh, that's how Faith Hour later on was also birthed. It's really to provide uh, one, Malaysia and mm. Malaysians, mm. and two, the church, access to this information so that we can be also data-driven in right. our decisions. Right. Mm. I like how it's just identifying a need and doing what you can oh, to meet yeah. that need. Spot and on. Just answering the call. Absolutely. Good. Spot yeah. on. Yeah. And so it's not it's not uh, swinging between, you know, uh, you have to be in a rural areas all the time or you're made to be in the rural areas and working among rural communities. But it's just whatever doors that the Lord opens for us, just be, just be ready to walk into it, right? And, uh, and as the natural world has different seasons. We need to recognize that there are different seasons in our lives as well, right? One season will come to an end mm. and then we walk into the next season. So yeah. kind of talk about that a little bit because I know some people feel like they're waiting on like a call of God mm. to like fall on them to like act on something. Mm -hmm. Like how do you balance that with like just because there's so many needs around us, right? Like how would you know that's something that, you know, God wants you to, to do and jump into I think the short answer I'll give will be the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah. Um, I always say in my earlier, younger days, I'm very passionate mm. about things or passion driven. Let's let's be passionate. Then I realized passion actually can be burnt. You uh, you can be burnt out, uh, and then when you're burnt out, your passion dries out. Mm. Right. I, I realized that. Uh, or you can be ranting or you know, some of the stories that we just shared, ranting or complaining and then you suddenly, either your passion dwindles or you lose right. it out. I realized passion is not sustainable. Mm. Uh, second thing maybe is then you find purpose. Okay, you find meaning, you go and search for meaning and you find meaning in what you do. But sometimes meaning can be secular too if mm. you're not careful or, mm. you know, uh, or you get sidetracked and then, you know, by a different meaning right, of life. So I, I, I realized what holds everything together and the, as a follower of Jesus Christ is really be presence-driven. Mm. If your presence does not go before me, I do not want to leave this place, Moses said that. Mm. Mm. And then also Moses said in that same uh, passage, he said, because your presence is the distinguishing factor that would then make me make my, my decisions. Yeah. Right. And so I, I would say in short, uh, it's really the Holy Spirit to guide me in those small things. If the Lord asks me to speak to somebody, I'll make sure I'll be there. I'm there. If the Lord asks me to pray for somebody, I'll make sure I pray. Mm. If the Lord asks me to open my mouth, I'll make sure I'm, 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 I'm there. So, yeah, we we just want, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really good. And mm. I think that's kind of profound. I think, but the key thing to that is also 
living a life that's so close to God that you know the heartbeat of God and you know when He prompts you to do something. And it's those little, little times that you keep obeying, keep obeying. Yeah. That's when you listen more intently yeah. that you hear Him more clearly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I think also on the flip side, I think the danger for people always wanting to know the call of God or the purpose of God for my life is when we just sit down and expect it to fall from the sky and not do anything about right. it, right? So I, there needs to be action. When there is faith, there also needs to be action, right? Um, and so there, earlier on in life, even we tell, you know, we oversee the campus ministry and we constantly talk to young people as well. Say, when you're young, try as many things as possible. Like put yourself out there. Um, and and expose yourself to just different ministries, different you know skill sets, talents. Try it, if, and and you wouldn't know until you've tried it mm. what you're good at and what you're not, right? And in that trying process, the Lord will speak to you. But if you don't do anything, you you can't expect that call to become clearer, mm. right? Yeah. So, trying to sum everything up from mm. all your experience so far, what would you say is the most challenging thing for you? And how did you overcome it? Uh, I'll speak for myself. I think the every time during transitions, and mm. we've been through a few transitions, it can feel lonely. Mm. So loneliness is real, right? Uh, at least for what I've we've gone through, or and I personally gone through. So, um, firstly, we we need to identify that it's lonely. I think being aware that it's lonely is very important. Um, Number two, then you find uh, and discover where your security then lies. Mm. Um, and, you know, over time, you know, after, you know, spending time with God and everything, then you realize, okay, your security actually lies in the Lord. But then in the practical way, then you need to find community, find mm. friends, yep. uh, be bold uh, and make friends. And, you know, whether in church or whether your neighbors, whether outside, you build that support system that you can. So, uh, Today, our support system is not just our church. Our church is fantastic. They are great. But also our support system are neighbours who may not know Jesus or do not know Jesus. Mm. Uh, our neighbours are also our friends of our kids, uh, the, the, right. the families. Right? Right. So these are all important structures that uh, we feel missionaries don't uh, emphasise mm. or talk about mm. enough or no one advises them uh, because these are actually what will sustain life right. in just in general for the long haul for the right. long haul yeah. and God can use anybody anybody, Absolutely. Yeah. anybody. Yeah. we That's should right. not just limit it to just church right. per se mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and for you? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges in the earlier days is definitely learning to juggle uh, doing ministry and uh, and work and parenting at the same time, right? right? And so uh, with our first child, uh, he was only a year plus when we were in Cambodia. Um, I think the biggest challenge is learning to parent for the very first time, being mm. in a foreign That's place, true. out of your comfort zone, not having the conveniences of modern day city life, right? right. Um, and then realizing that um, that parenting really is a gift but then being also very, very present uh, that the Lord had called us into Cambodia for that season, right? So uh, so the details, I think, you know, of, of parenting, uh, I think every new parent will go through challenges, right? But it's, it's just magnified a lot more when you're in a, in a different place. And so that was a real uh, um, uh, challenge, I would say. But we all come out stronger. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, out of it, right? And so I've had to unlearn a lot of things and relearn a lot of things. Like what are what are what is actually needed in parenting? You just need to be present with a child. A lot of the accessories and the extra stuff, it's it's probably not necessary, right? Just be present with him and um and enjoy the ride. I think one of the biggest lessons that we have learned is really just to enjoy life, enjoy ministry uh, mm. with our children. That when God calls, uh, that calling is not just an individual calling, but it is a it is a, uh, a calling for our marriage. It is also a calling for our children. Right. That every step of obedience that we take as parents has an impact on our children, has a lasting imprint on the legacy that we leave for our children. And so, um, so yeah, it's it's a, a 
it's what is one of those struggles, but we've also grown stronger after it. And I think we've also gained a lot more joy mm. uh, coming out of it. Yeah. Right. I like how like you remove all the other things that people say you need, like, oh, I need books about parenting. Like I, I mm. need like so many things. But that we I need did to do read a lot of that though. <laughs> yeah, we did read a lot of that. But after that, it's like, oh, actually, maybe we don't re- really need a lot of those frills. Yeah. 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 And I think sometimes people just feel more anxious about it than anything mm. else. Com- I mean, compared to actual real reality itself. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's great. Um, so tell us what is, has been the most fulfilling thing for you guys. Oh, um, just really to see um, God real in every area of our lives. I, I know this is something very generic, but um, to see that uh, firstly, for me, uh, our marriage is strong, is thriving. Uh, we genuinely do enjoy being with each other and not just because work being the center of it. Right. So I think for me, uh, you know, doing ministry, that's always my 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 concern. Uh, my relationship, my wife and the kids, right? Uh, but as of today, you know, I think we really do enjoy one another. We have our challenges, we have our tiffs, we have our conflicts and all that's for sure, right? Uh, but generally we do that. So to me, that is at, at least one, one, one of the high parts of uh, this journey that we've been. Um, yeah. And for you? Yeah, I mean... Uh... So we didn't share answers, right? But uh, um, I echo definitely what he, what Terence just uh, mentioned. I think it's the most fulfilling part is really being able to uh, share in ministry and in work together as a couple, mm. and then as a family as well. Um, that would be the really the greatest joy. Uh, above and beyond that, um, it is being able to open that lid to ensure that we there's always an overflow um, of whatever that the Lord has taught us. I think the greatest privilege and joy is for, for us to be able to sow into the lives of people, right? Mm. It, it really is a privilege. Uh, and so with the campus ministry or whoever that we have conversations with, right, we always see it as a, a huge privilege to be able to share our story uh, because there is, that's that's an evidence of God at work, right? right? And so that overflow is, it it really adds joy to our life. And so that would be really the most fulfilling part of uh, one of the most fulfilling parts of of just walking with the Lord, uh, proclaiming that He is real and Amen. He is real all the time. Yeah. Amen. I like how you know God carves out a special story for you guys as a couple, Mm. you know, just being obedient to what he has called, like each person's story could be different, Mm. but just allowing God to do that, you know, and he brings joy and how he brings things together in your lives that Mm. has been so amazing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so it's for us to really just discover what God has for us, even as we step up in faith. Yeah. Well, it has been such a pleasure having you guys in the studio today. Um, Why don't, we end by just sharing with our audience maybe a little bit more where can they find out about what you guys do um, and how they can be involved if they're interested. Yeah, I think for Wiki Impact is wikiimpact.com. Is it going to appear like here? No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Wikiimpact.com, uh, on Instagram at wikiimpact, uh, faithhour.com and on Instagram, faithhour.co. Um, yeah, for us just... Search us on Instagram, LinkedIn or wherever. I think you should be able to find us easily. Yeah. Mm. Great. Yeah. Any last words for our audience? Live life without regrets. You really only have one life to live and live it to the fullest mm. for His glory. Mm. Yeah, That's great. All right. On that note, I hope you guys have been inspired just as I have been. And uh, we hope to see you in the next episode. Bye Thank now. Thank you for having us. Thanks for listening to the One Degree Shift podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, Do share it with your friends and tag us on social media. Don't forget to like, follow and turn on notifications for our latest updates. We hope to see you next time. God bless.